good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Silvia Pudu, and uh, I work for the African, uh, <laughs> sorry, and I work for the French Development Agency, the AFT, and I am the coordinator of the COMSSA initiative, the Covenant of Mayor in Sub Saharan Africa. I will make my presentation in uh, English. Mais je voudrais euh, m'excuser pour ceux qui ne se sont pas à l'aise avec les Français. Euh, nous vous proposons de venir nous voir euh, sur la plateforme euh, ou nous contacter par email pour avoir euh, plus d'informations. Um, so I am really honored to have uh, the chance of presenting COMSSA uh, at the Paris Peace Forum on behalf of the partners of the COMSSA initiative. But I'm also personally proud to be here as I strongly believe that only through a collective action we will be able to overcome the challenges to which we are confronted today. Uh, they can be health, uh, social inequality and or climate change. So I would have preferred to be here at the Paris Peace Forum in person to have a more interactive uh, presentation. But uh, well, I'm here in my apartment in Lyon behind my screen, seeing just my face. And I don't even know who is uh, listening or watching to me. So don't hesitate to drop me a line or a word on your chat on your right side so that, to show that you're there. So. Um, oh, this is not the presentation. Uh, what is the problem? Um, it's not the right one. Okay. Um, so this is the plan uh, of my presentation. Uh, we will start with an overview of the problematic uh, to address the problem, why we are talking uh, about cities, why uh, we are talking about climate, and why we are talking about Africa. Um, um, sorry, I have some problem. Uh, we will further uh, present uh, how um, COMSSA can be the answer to this challenge. And then we will go through the history of COMSSA uh, until today and the focus on the new current phase of implementation. Then we will conclude uh, with uh, um, a little bit why uh, you should join uh, the COMSSA, but also why all stakeholders, uh, namely NGOs, private sector, financial institutions, they all shall get involved. So, um, to address the challenge, so this, the figures that are showed here already suggest uh, that the situation is critical. Uh, cities are already dealing uh, with the effect of climate change and more and more often they are victims of extreme weather events such as flooding, droughts and powerful storms. City Cities contribute to 70% uh, to global emission. This is a huge number, and uh, transport and building are among the largest contributors. Finally, although the share of the population with access to electricity has increased in the past decade, there is still a large part of the population in sub-Saharan Africa which lack access to basic energy services. Um, so, um, Africa uh, contributes only uh, less than 4% uh, to global emission. Uh, many of you may argue that uh, this is nothing, and you're right, but if you consider that uh, um, Africans' urban population is projected to triple by 2050 uh, to reach 1.4 billion, uh, the pictures change completely. And uh, the bad news is that Africa's infrastructure uh, development is not set to follow the same path. 
this means that this rapid uh, growth in urban population poses a unique challenges to city administration that struggle in providing sustainable and resilient services as well as infrastructure to their citizens. Transport, waste management, housing, clean cooking, air pollution are at the heart of the concerns of local governments. Um, the mayor of Bangui in Central Africa told us recently that its population has already grown from 500,000 to 2 million in just a few years and is expected to quadruple in by 2050 due to the, a massive rural, rural exodus and influx uh, of displaced people uh, following the post-crisis period. So um, local government have an important role to play in this process to avoid that urbanization remains out of control and above all to make sure uh, that um, this urbanization remains sustainable. And this is why in 2015, uh, the work of the COP21 in Paris, the European Union initiated the Covenant of Mayor in Sub-Saharan Africa to support the cities to take the lead and becomes an integral part of the solution in fighting climate change and to foster access to sustainable energies. Um, before uh, going into detail uh, to describe uh, Comes SA, it is important uh, to mention that uh, Comes SA is the African regional chapter uh, of the Global Covenant of Mayor for Climate and Energy. Uh, the GCOM, which is uh, the largest co coalition of cities committed to local climate and energy action. So the colleagues of GCOM are also present in this forum, so I invite you to visit their page and uh, listen to their pitch that they made the first day if you want to learn more about it. Um, so uh, similarly to the GCOM, um, under Comes SA, local authorities are invited to make a voluntary political commitment um, to implement climate and energy actions in their communities. And they agree on a long-term vision to address the three main challenges, namely um, access to sustainable energy, climate mitigation and climate adaptation. Uh, they receive uh, guidelines and support for the development of sustainable and, uh, and energy access and climate action plans. So as of today, Comes SA counts 237 sanitary cities in over 36 countries in, in, across the region, reaching approximately uh, 85 million people. Nine of the 15 largest uh, cities in Africa are signatories of the Comes SA, but it's important to note that cities from all size can be a uh, part of the covenant. Uh, finally, the initiative works in three languages, uh, which are French, English and Portuguese, uh, to ease the communication uh, among the members. So here um, you have uh, uh, the history uh, of uh, Comes SA since its establishment in 2015 and uh, uh, the major milestones uh, uh, until uh, uh, today. And, uh, um, and in this slide, uh, the 10 implementing partners that includes uh, state agencies, NGOs or city net network uh, which have contributed uh, to pave the way and successfully building uh, in only five years a recognized network of a local authority uh, with the core early movers and creating ownership. Um, Building on the success um, and on the experience of the first phases of the initiative, a new emphasis has been put on project preparation to boost infrastructure uh, urban investment. This new phase uh, started in January 2019 
and is implemented by uh, four member states organization, namely the IFD uh, together with Expertise France, the Spanish uh, cooperation IACID, and the German technical cooperation GIZ. Uh, these four MSO can count on their long expertise and experience in sub-Saharan Africa to scale up the initiative and its impact. The duration of uh, uh, the, um, this phase is 46 months with a budget of 27.5 million euro um, funded largely by the European Union, but also from the general, the German Ministry for Economic Development and Cooperation (BMZ) and the Spanish Agency for International Development Cooperation (ICD). This new phase um, goes hand in hand uh, with a refined focus of the Secretariat and Technical Help Desk, which become more integrated with the new phase of the initiative to ensure synergies and collaboration between the MSOs and the overarching initiative. Uh, ICLE Africa is hosting the Secretariat and the Technical Help Desk, while the two city networks, CMR and UCLG Africa, are entrusted for political advocacies and of the initiative. Um, which um, which are the specific challenges encountered by the city and which are the responses that COMSSA is trying to bring? Uh, one of the main challenges that the city faces in sub-Saharan Africa is access to finance. Uh, for this reason, uh, COMSSA has refined its focus, uh, as showed earlier, on unlocking climate finance with uh, the objective of mobilizing 160 million Euro for urban energy uh, project. Uh, there is also a lack of capacity of local government to fulfill the criteria of funders, and, and often projects are at very early stage of development. So, um, capacity building activity and technical support for early stage project development is provided by the initiative uh, through ad hoc trainings, matchmaking events and through the elaboration of several knowledge products. Finally, COMSSA is um, creating uh, platforms for dialogue uh, with different level of government, uh, namely the um, national and local government, uh, to uh, tackle the issue that many um, COMSSA um, local government uh, uh, encounter uh, as um, many cities don't have the mandate to receive direct funding from financiers. Um, COMSSA is also uh, trying to increase opportunity of collaboration uh, with the private sector and to foster public-private partnerships. Um, so how does uh, COMSSA work? Um, COMSSA is supporting uh, local administration through three pillars. Uh, the first pillar is the support to development of sustainable energy and climate action plan, the CACAP, which represents 20% of the budget. To date, uh, 10 cities have submitted their CACAP and 15 15 cities are supported, are currently supported for the development or improvement of their CACAP according to COMSSA guidelines. The main goal of this pillar is to mainstream climate change adaptation and mitigation and access to energy within the planning activities of cities. Um, and in line, of course, with the national NDCs and national commitments. Uh, the second pillar of implementation is the support uh, to the emergence of low carbon and climate urban infrastructure. Um, this represented 70% of the budget and I will illustrate uh, later um, how does this pillar work in, in details. The third pillar uh, is the strengthening of networking and knowledge management, which represent 
10% of the budget. Um, as I said, many events and training for city staff have been implemented, and the four MSOs are pursuing this uh, capacity building activities and networking through the organization of meetings with the private sector, bank, regional, international events, city to city exchange, and workshops. Um, uh, Commissary C um, is providing in-depth support uh, to a limited number of cities uh, through the four member states organization. In the picture, you can see uh, the 15 cities selected and where um, the, the MSOs are uh, supporting for uh, development of the CACAP and on project preparation. Uh, it has to be noted uh, that uh, for the cities that uh, are not served by the, um, the MSOs, uh, the technical help desk is able to deliver tangible light touch technical services uh, to COMSSA city signatories. So um, the objective of the four MSOs uh, are um, 15 cities with developed or improved CCAP, uh, 16 project rich bankability uh, and uh, can become in the financing pipeline with private sector, banks or international financial institution, 200 million for mobilized for projects and uh, 220 uh, tons of CO2 uh, emission reduction potential for the 15 year following the implementation and three international and regional events. So, um, you, as mentioned earlier, the second pillar of the initiative um, is the support for urban infrastructure project preparation to bring the project to maturity and uh, to reach bankability. This is uh, the long list of 49 projects um, where, uh, which are currently under consideration in the COMSSA pipeline for a total potential funding of 120 million euros. Uh, the projects are distributed among the sector, the eligible sector, as indicated in the chart, um, and which reflect the priority uh, sectors for the cities. Uh, it has to be noted here that there are some sectors that deserve uh, more extension, for example, uh, transport and uh, energy efficiency in building, which are a key sector in urban development. Uh, also to be noted that 40% of the project identif identified so far have a project volume of less than uh, 1 million. Um, this shows uh, the scale of most uh, city projects in sub-Saharan Africa and the need to group uh, city projects together or expand their focus uh, to increase their attractiveness to financiers. Uh, this is uh, an example of uh, um, a, a concrete infrastructure project that is, uh, is supported by um, AFD, one of the four MSOs. Um, it is uh, the project related to sustainable forest management and clean cooking energy in the Sahel. Uh, the project objective are to ensure a sustainable supply of biomass, including forest management, and to support uh, the development of an efficient and sustainable market for improved cook stove um, in Burkina Faso, Mali and Niger in particular. So AFD is currently funding the feasibility studies. Uh, the activity encompassed are the opportunities of using remote sensing system to monitor forest degradation and management, as you can see in the picture on your left. Um, the state of the heart and perspective of cooking energy market in Sahel, with mapping of projects and private sector, the role and potential of local government in the development of an improved cook stove market. So, um, 
There are also, besides uh, the work on project preparation and uh, uh, action plans uh, development, uh, the MSOs are also producing some um, knowledge uh, um, knowledge uh, and studies, knowledge products and studies. Uh, I strongly invite you to visit our website and uh, download them. And then uh, one uh, last uh, si slide of uh, uh, conclusion. So why uh, getting involved? And I'm speaking not only to um, local governments, but also to all the stakeholders uh, that work in urban area. So for local governments, uh, um, come as I say, uh, represent uh, a unique opportunity to engage in climate action and sustainable energy and uh, will give the access to a network of uh, uh, more than 230 local governments committed to climate change and uh, gives the possibility to for of peer to peer networking and learn from the experience of other local authorities um, and possibly find together an innovative solution um, this is doesn't only give the access to uh, let's say south to south cooperation but also uh, south north cooperation so vertical cooperation, especially um, the COMSSA being part of the uh, GCOM. So, of course, the cities are at the heart of the initiative, but the involvement of all st stakeholders, uh, NGOs, uh, private sector, development bank, uh, uh, we need uh, the um, uh, the involvement of uh, everybody as we need uh, uh, PPPs, we need a sound project proposal, um, and we need, of course, uh, local and international banks. So um, this is also why we are here at the Paris Peace Forum, because uh, um, everybody, um, only through collective action, we can overcome the, the challenges on urban sustainable development in sub-Saharan Africa. So I would like to... Um, Thank you very much uh, for uh, your attention. I hope you're still there. Um, and I invite you to visit us on our website to, to write an email or to um, simply follow us on social network. So if there are any questions, I don't know how many time is left. Uh, oh, six minutes. OK, let me see. Um, Okay, uh, I can let me read the question. So, for example, uh, which are the criteria for project uh, to be uh, taken uh, in the project uh, pipeline? Um, okay, this is a, a good question. Um, each MSOs, um, each MSO has its own criteria. Mm, to select projects, but in, there are some common criteria that can be um, named, uh, namely the, um, can we say, uh, the local, the project need, um, the city need to be signatory of the, um, of the Covenant of Mayor, and uh, also the beneficiary of the project are, um, are the, are the citizens of these cities. Uh, also, um, the project need to um, be uh, on one of the um, sector uh, that uh, we, um, that is eligible. So these are uh, the sector, renewable energy, energy efficiency, uh, waste management, the wastewater treatment, um, public lighting system and transport. Uh, um, of course, uh, the, pro the project proposal uh, shouldn't be, as I said earlier, just a project idea, but they have they, sh they sh shall be on uh, um, a kind of improved stage with, uh, for example, a financial uh, plan already uh, there and uh, with some preliminary study uh, there. Uh, okay, um, let me uh, see. Um, 
would you like to replicate the same approach as where in the world what lesson have you learned and could be applied to other region um, this is a, a is exactly um, the work of the of the gcom um, which is uh, made of uh, um, several regional uh, covenant um, and uh, uh, let's say that this work is uh, is brought forward uh, uh, from the GCOM, and uh, uh, of course there is a lot of exchange uh, to learn a lesson from other cities and uh, region who have encountered uh, similar projects. Um, I don't know. I, I see there are other questions. I don't know if I have time to answer to all of them. Um, okay, let me see. Otherwise, I will promise I will answer to you. Um, I will answer to you directly or on the platform. Um, um, how do you ensure that mayors implement environmental friendly public policies once your coaching is complete? Is there a monitoring and evaluation process? Yes, there is a, a monitoring and evaluation process that uh, um, is put in place by um, by the covenant, the, the Commissary, say uh, exactly to to see that uh, uh, the policy is put in place and the action taken. Uh, are compliant uh, uh, with the um, are in line uh, uh, with this um, action plan. So um, let me see if I can have another. Um, okay. It's not easy to read all the the question over here. Um, uh, yes, I think uh, I think uh, I have answer to all the question. If not, uh, I will uh, I will get back to you on our platform. But I, before we close, I would like to thank you again for. I hope uh, this has raised your curiosity or interest. I wanted to tell you that there will be two information se sessions for um, uh, for a local government that would like uh, to uh, become signatories and uh, this will be the 19th November and the 23rd of November but you can have more information if you visit our website so thank you very much again and uh, I hope you enjoy the uh, this last day of the forum I'm looking forward to um, communicate to you again on Commerce SA.